Hey everybody, I wanted to show you um, some different ways that you can use the Use Everywhere nodes uh, in conjunction with my new um, Multipass node as well as Junction nodes uh, from Trong 0246. Uh, and these are all ways, this is essentially like a test bed here, of ways that we're thinking about passing information around. Uh, through the next iteration of uh, Aegis Flow Schema. Uh, I probably will not be releasing it with these methods right away uh, because I want to do a lot of testing on them and also because it'll take some time to, um, you know, uh, replace. So uh, I'm going to keep the current version of Schema, which is effectively done and coming out uh, as soon as I can get an installer for it and get everything packaged up. But uh, in any case, I wanted to show you kind of what the next steps are, right? Because we're always trying to grow, make the workflows better, uh, make things a little more um, modular. So uh, with that, let's get started. We're going to zoom in here. We're going to see that right now I have these send nodes, right, which are being fed by an SDXL uh, loader. and Effectively, you know, each one of these is sending off to a named target. Um, in this case, I'm sending it to everywhere that matches this string, Aegis Flow Multipass. And that's because uh, Chris uh, very helpfully added in the ability to do uh, reg regular expressions fed by this simple string node, or, well, any, any node that outputs just a string, right? Uh, that, uh, you know, it has to be present at the time uh, that the workflow loads. It can't be, like, built through uh, some kind of process. You can't, say, make your uh, simple string the result of some uh, concatenation, right, that you had to actually process it, because obviously that's not processed, so it wouldn't know where to send it, so it'll never work, right? But it will work with a defined... Uh, name inside of here and so that's what we've done we basically said target anything that has Aegis flow multipass as its title meaning this part up here and send it off virtually using UE nodes so what you're looking at here is a new node <clears throat> that I just made uh, yesterday called uh, Aegis flow multipass it effectively just accepts inputs on the left and outputs the same on the right. And the reason that this is important and you know is that I want to be able to target all of these things with one single name, right? I don't want to have like preview image images, right? Because then that that would mean uh, from a logistical nightmare, I would have to come over here and say set the title regex to preview image and only you know send it to the preview image or even worse send it to everything with the word images in there which also doesn't work very well unless your workflow is super simple because you're just going to run into conflicts right so we want to do some strict naming control of where we send stuff and we do that by limiting it via a string so that we can change it in one place and pass it around to anything that matches this name and then we can get all of this stuff connected in one shot right so that's why we do that and this is a uh, pretty much the simplest thing you can do right where we're starting off on the left with our loader we're putting it into a sampler we're um, shooting that off through these sends and then we're taking the image out and we're previewing it right pretty simple example right now I got a whole bunch of other stuff here though obviously and right now a lot of it is muted and so no lines are showing up right but let's see if we can find something else with this Aegis Flow multi-pass name and there we go we have one right there and over on the right here not really any more complex or not much more complex but we are going to take the inputs once we unmute these and we're going to run them through another sampler and get another new image, right? So I'll go ahead and unmute all of these, right? 
and you'll notice no lines show up. That's because um, the UE nodes only update when something happens on the screen, right? So uh, that's the kind of the signal it takes, uh, some interaction with a node to say, hey, go through and check all your links again, right? Uh, one thing is that it mostly does that all the time, but occasionally it won't. If that happens to us, uh, we can simply go and refresh the page and they'll come back. Um, particularly, you'll see that happen a lot when you use templates to paste things in and you get a temporary naming conflict. Um, once you resolve the naming conflict, it doesn't always do a really great job. Um, even when you wiggle, it might not look like it's connected, even though it is. So I'll usually just refresh the page and then everything comes back. All right, so basically what's happening here, right? We're taking all the things that we've defined within our loader and our sampler, and then they're going off to the senders. And because these two names are the same, they will receive all the same stuff, right? Now, weirdly enough, we're now passing that all into another row of senders, which we're calling uh, or which we're sending off to another one called target2. And the reason we're doing that is because I want to put in another sampler, right? So I want to take all this information, all these models and everything, and I want to feed it back into another sampler group, right? To get another image, right? Which is what we've done here. If we come up here, you'll notice like these, you know, have this really cool jellyfish, you know, Loki loom style thing going on and it's kind of hypnotic and neat but obviously it takes up a huge amount of space and it's kind of unnecessary right so what you can do is you can take all of these right select them right click align selected to top I like to keep it clean align selected to left so now they're kind of all stacked on top of each other because we don't really need to mess with them Right? Once they're set up, this name here gives us everything we need to know. Right, We don't ever have to touch these again. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and reintegrate this. Now you'll also notice we have this multi-pass node, which is zipped up. right, And it is getting the same set of inputs. Right, So once we unmute these, nodes up here like so right and we wiggle 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 go I like to call it the super laser so now we have a huge number of inputs all kind of flowing into this multipasser going over to a big group of sends here right which you know those are the same basically these two things are exactly the same it's just they're spread out so if I was to do this line selected to top you know and then uh, unfortunately here you have to collapse them you know um, so you know if we were to collapse all of these nodes it would look exactly like this at the top so this is a great way to kind of get one nice big fat pipe straight across to whatever you're working on and you'll note that target 3 is matching up with target 3 over here right and from here, when we expand it, we can just go in and, you know, uh, wire stuff up uh, as we like it, right? We can pass it through. We could wire another sampler if we wanted to. We don't always have to use the senders as long as you're going to want to keep those things kind of in the same area, you know, when you're setting stuff up. Um, you can wire multiple things uh, manually, right, and kind of save them all as a template and that's kind of how you build modules right you build modules for the workflow by inputting them in and out of these um, multipassers right so there's that one more cool trick is using trunks um, uh, zero trunk 0246 has some really cool nodes called highways and junctions I'm gonna use junctions today and um, we're going to go ahead and use another loader. This one is SD15 down here. So we're running SDXL up here and we're running SD15 down here uh, in the same workflow. Now I've targeted a junction 
right? This time I'm calling it junction B just for goofiness. And I'm targeting that, um, let's see, where's junction B? Sorry. Give me two seconds here, sorry. Interesting. Let's go ahead and unmute. It's probably over here. Yep, sorry. It's because I moved this way where it wasn't supposed to be. Sorry, kind of got lost there for a couple seconds. Anyway, this group over here has junction B, right? And this is a, a masking example, right? It's building a little kind of masking workflow just for testing, right? And I'm going to go ahead and right click and add a group for these nodes as well. So we can kind of easily move this stuff around. There we go. And let's go ahead and unmute these. This is being fed from the SDXL workflow, right? And then down here, you can also do this, right click, and set group nodes to always, and that'll wire up. So now we've got more stuff coming on here, right? Now you see here, it has a junction, right? And this source junction is basically a node that ar takes an arbitrary number of inputs and then outputs it as a pipe, right? But instead of sending it out and in by doing a hard wire like so, right? Which we could do. We don't want that, right? Because we want to basically target anything with junction B as the name, right? We want these things to self build basically. Uh, I don't want to have to keep dragging wires across like I'm using some old synthesizer. So uh, what we do is we assign junction B as our target regex uh, for the multipasser. And then we just send the junction pipe, right? So now instead of having to wire all this up, we can also just send it via this single pipe. And it will send in everything that we have listed here, right? Also, we can simultaneously send those things out to yet another location, right? And here, I, I should uh, really um, change this from a simple string to, let's call it multi-pass target, just to help us keep uh, track of things. And here, I'm targeting multi-pass SD15 and you see that I have that here. Um, and I also have it up here so that it can target, you know, the missing items that I didn't put in the junction. It can get those virtually, right? So now if we control M, wiggle, 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 go. There you go. And so with this, we can con connect up all of these disparate groups, right? And right now they're just showing previews, right? So that's like, ooh, big, big friggin' deal, right? Big whoop de doo Well, the cool thing, though, is that these could be anything, right? These could be your own modules, your own workflows. Um, with Within Aegisflow, obviously, we have some built-in modules like IP mix and faces and a couple of other things, right? Um, but this is a good example of a, of a module, right? I piped in stuff you know, virtually, and I added it in, and then I did a, a over here, a face detect, um, or a mask by text, I just said face, right? And then I can choose to either edit the mask in Comfy Shop, like this, for instance, and let's clear it, and let's say, I mean, this is not going to look great, but let's say we wanted everything but her face to not be pixelated, right? So we'll kind of make this big rough mask around her and we'll give her a pixelated face, which is not going to be super attractive, but at least it makes sense, right? And if I select here, number two, it's going to go ahead and use that mask instead of the text mask, right? And we can cue that up, and now we got a pixelated face, right? 
So you can build modules that do little cool things, but they all auto wire themselves. And if we hide them, you know, look ma, no wires. These all live separately, right? And so, you know, we can add stuff in through templates. Let's just say um, we're going to do a uh, just another uh, simple sampler, right? Pop that in. Let's give it a group, right? Let's give it a new title. Actually, let's not. Let's keep it, right? Because just wires itself up right and then if we come over here and we randomize and press Q we're gonna get another image pretty dope huh anyway uh, thanks a bunch for watching uh, like I said these are all different techniques uh, that we're evaluating right or that I'm evaluating uh, to see uh, which one is going to be the best uh, offhand, the junction one works really well, but it's a little complicated to set up and work with um, because it's one of those auto-growing lists, and those are really cool uh, when they're necessary. But what I don't like is that if I accidentally like take one of these things off, it senses it and it gets rid of it, and then like the order gets all messed up and stuff. And I'm not a huge fan of that, so it's kind of why um, I'm sort of gearing towards the super laser concept because it's the most like what I already have set up and also because if I need to do something weird like let's say I want to change everything or I want to keep everything the same except this negative send right I could do uh, like a clip um, clip texting code right and I could get you know this clip amount from somewhere it, I'd obviously have to target it with the proper name here, but then I could put the conditioning here for negative, right, and type stuff in here. So I could, like, inject negative prompting into the middle of this process if I wanted to. So that's the other reason I like this. Um, you can do that, obviously, with the junction as well, but it makes the, um, it makes the process a little harder, right? The only difference, or the only thing with these is you just have to remember to hold down shift when you're moving them around so that you don't accidentally do this, right? And if you do accidentally do that, it's super easy to just move it back into place or whatever. Um, so that is that. Uh, anyway, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, I know that it's been a long time in getting Shima out. Um, I thought I'd have it done at the beginning of the week, but... Um, Unfortunately, you know, it's the week before Christmas, got a lot going on uh, with the wife and kids, and uh, also I'm just trying to make it as bug-free as I possibly can So, uh, before I release. So anyway, thanks a bunch. Talk to you soon. Bye.